everyone, I'm Xander Nickel. Uh, I'm the Senior Director of uh, Data Services at Pluralsight, uh, which includes our streaming data platform and our streaming uh, data analytics um, at the company. And I'm Arjun Narayan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Materialize. Cool. And today we're going to be talking about operationalizing Pluralsight's data uh, with Materialize and the efforts that we're uh, doing right now to uh, both uh, put out some of that work, as well as introduce new use cases. So Pluralsight is a platform uh, that provides technical training uh, through video courses, labs, assessments, or hands-on learning uh, for enterprise customers, as well as uh, individual learners. Um, and Pluralsight started its journey with uh, streaming uh, back in about 2017. This was prior to me joining the company. Um, and we realized that there was a need for real-time data in order to power our event-driven architecture. Uh, and um, in that need for uh, real-time data, we couldn't find an off-the-shelf product that met some of the needs that we had um, for our like rules that we wanted to put in place. Uh, at the time, Mike Walchick uh, was the leader who came up with uh, something called the data vascular system. Uh, you'll also hear me refer to this as the DVS. Um, and it's an internal streaming uh, tool um, that's built on top of Kafka, uh, includes ingestion and replication, um, and was uh, sort of the intro to uh, working out some of the details there. Um, while this was oper operationalized in 2018, it was still uh, stabilizing when I came and joined the company in January of 2019. Um, and we were building our first use cases and requiring teams to move over um, so that we could uh, have those use cases tested out. Um, with the data vascular system, this includes the uh, what we call Hydra uh, applications or APIs that surround our ingestion and replication. And as we've experimented with other things, we realized that that uh, platform wasn't everything that we needed in order to deliver uh, real-time data. Um, and you can see this sort of like messy web of interconnected data sources. Uh, and I think you hear this from most people who interact with Kafka today, that there's a data sprawl and uh, this uh, makes it difficult to provide data governance or know where the data is, or really uh, put controls on top of this data. Um, every application in our uh, company uh, for our skills product uh, uses the DVS, or, um, which is inclusive of uh, some native tools we built with Kafka JS, some Spark, some Flink, and the like. Um, so our uh, data platform really looks uh, like this uh, with a few other inner source tools uh, surrounding it. Um, but we have Kafka as the central uh, in ingestion point and replication point. We have these APIs built, uh, Hydra ingest and Hydra streams. Um, we also have built in KSQL, Spark, and Flink as new use cases have arrived. Um, but as I'll talk about in just a little bit, uh, the engineers who power those applications can often be really expensive, and talented engineers uh, who run those applications can be hard to find. Um, and it's expensive to be running the infrastructure behind those. So we run Spark on EMR um, and have uh, DevOps engineers who manage that. We have uh, DevOps engineers or data engineers who manage our KSQL, and we use Kinesis Data Analytics for Flink. Um, all of these tend to be very costly um, experiences to build out, and um, that's both in terms of the, um, the process to build uh, them, so like expensive in dev time, uh, as well as speed to market, and um, the overall cost of the infrastructure to run these projects. Um, a couple years ago, uh, Pluralsight purchased a Cloud Guru, or ACG, um, and as Kafka is the backbone to data replication throughout our company, um, really um, adding a full new company to our infrastructure uh, meant that we were adding additional load, uh, and it 
pushed uh, the DVS past its limits, or Hydra past its limits to support. And um, we started that process in about February of 2022. And by December of 2022, we started seeing our first instances of uh, critical failures affecting end customers, as well as uh, individual learners on our platform. Um, and we have continued to see a breakdown as we have added in uh, new features and tried to uh, build out the platform to support that scale. Um, but really, we are seeing that that deterioration of a homegrown tool um, is not where we want to uh, take our product. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have um, engineers building things in Spark and Flink. And um, what we see there is like Scala engineers are really expensive. Um, and while they are like really excited to work in Flink and Spark uh, and really dedicated to that, um, the complexity that exists in there means that if any of them decide to leave, we'll have to rehire and we'll have a slower speed to market. Um, and we want something that has lower complexity, increase our speed to market, and uh, we want something that uh, allows us to go out and find talent that can work um, on a more simple um, streaming structure. Uh, something that's closer to SQL. Um, I know there are a few tools being built out there that try and like mimic uh, some form of SQL. Um, and we've tested out a number of them in our effort to sort of figure out this problem. Um, so that led us um, to the decision to uh, test and prove out Materialize as a potential replacement to the DVS. Um, we are, have been able to move some of our Spark and Flink jobs over into Materialize and have found them both easier to manage um, through DBT uh, and an interaction with uh, the SQL interface that Materialize offers, um, as well as quicker to build. Um, so on the Spark side, uh, the process is actually quite extensive, and it has taken that team a long time to deliver. On the Flink side, we've built libraries and uh, like starter repos that have enabled us to be able to like build things out much quicker. But the amount of money that we're spending on that infrastructure using Kinesis Data Analytics or EMR uh, means that it is money that we couldn't be spending on some other initiative that we have. Um, and uh, sort of the budget belt uh, is uh, being tightened across the uh, SaaS industry, and uh, we're feeling that and looking for um, ways that we can uh, make this easier. Um, and over to you. Thanks very much. So before we get to what Materialize is, um, let's talk about what motivated us to even build a system like Materialize, right? So there's, there is a lot of value in working with streaming data today. I mean, that's why all of you are here, right? It's, it's very valuable to your business to be working on up-to-date data and on the freshest data possible. But the challenge is that building these applications directly on stream processors requires a lot of expertise. And you have some of that expertise, but it's not uniformly distributed and ubiquitous across your entire organization. You have a few areas of your engineering organization that can be productive and build Flink and Spark and Kafka Streams applications, but the rest of your organization predominantly works on batch data today. But these people would benefit from having fresh data just as much as the rest of your organization if they could get it. And the tools and frameworks that they are familiar with and productive with today are primarily SQL on a batch cloud data warehouse, right? They can't write a streaming join or a microservice that is able to deal with the nuances of setting sliding windows and things like that. They can write a join in SQL today on a cloud data warehouse. So what we want is to get those people the rest of the organization getting all of the benefits of streaming data, just as you have your centers of excellence working with Flink and Spark and Kafka Streams today. So Materialize was purpose built for this, right? It looks and feels like an analytic cloud data warehouse, right? It is eerily familiar to an analytics engineer or an analyst who 
can spin up a virtual warehouse, write some SQL, uh, connect to a batch data lake, it brings these familiar idioms to the world of streaming, right? So Materialize is what we call an operational data warehouse. It is built for your operational use cases that require seconds of latency or sub-second latency. Um, but it's very familiar. It, it has compute clusters. These compute clusters are isolated from each other. Um, you, write, you, you drive them exclusively with SQL, right? So you write SQL materialized views that are long-lived and continuously update. They, com they connect to and share an underlying shared storage layer that's based on S3, which connects directly to your Kafka data sources or your change data capture feeds coming from your databases. Um, and you can mix and match data sets. You can isolate them using role-based access control and all of these familiar SQL tools for keeping data, for managing your data. Users don't need expertise beyond writing SQL statements. They predominantly write select queries and materialized views queries. Um, but everything is powered by a scale-out distributed stream processor called Timely Dataflow that lives in these compute clusters. Right? So they're getting all of the benefits of streaming with what looks like a very familiar batch workflow. So let's take a quick sneak peek at what it looks like to use Materialize today. So this is a live running SQL query. The only modification is before the select statement, we wrote subscribe. But this is looks and feels exactly like a Postgres SQL database, right? So it is using, you can connect to Materialize using a familiar driver or a tool that connects to Postgres today. Um, and you get all of the benefits of the live queries, of updates being pushed to you within sub-second or single-digit seconds, but you have none of the operational complexity of building and working directly with the stream processor. You're getting all of the benefits, it's just being abstracted up and looks and feels like a database. So where does Materialize fit into your data stack, right? So it sits upstream of your traditional batch-based cloud data warehouses, right? Once you've slowed down the data and moved it to batch, we can't speed it back up. So it connects directly to your Kafka, to your message brokers. It also plugs in directly to the relational databases like Postgres, um, or it works with change data capture that you may be familiar with like Debezium, right? So it can mix and match and pull in this data continuously. It stores all of it on S3, so you get all of the benefits of the cheap storage, the tiered storage economics. Um, and it connects directly to real-time applications that you build directly talking to Materialize using a Postgres driver or to SaaS tools that connect directly to Materialize to push data back um, or uh, to dashboards that you've built. Right? These are all things that our customers use today on top of Materialize. And you can also push that data back again to your analytic cloud data warehouse using Kafka, or you might move some of that directly to your analytic data warehouse. It's not meant to replace every batch use case. You still want to run your historical queries, your once a quarter, once a month reports that you run on batch today. Those can continue to live in batch, but if there's any workload that would benefit from being live, you can easily port that over because it's a, you're moving a SQL workload to a SQL workload. Materialize exists to expand the universe of people who can gain the benefits of streaming data. Right? Most organizations today have one or two or a few critical use cases in streaming. They do not have everything that they want to build live, live today in streaming. Right? The way I think about this is what is the backlog of all of the things that you would move to streaming today if it was a snap of your fingers? Right? Materialize exists to make that backlog move to streaming as fast and as efficiently as possible. Right? The, we all understand the power of Kafka, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Um, but this allows, Materialize allows every engineer, every analyst who can write SQL today, which is a set of people that is much larger, a set of people who can build and maintain an ongoing microservice. Thank you very much.